hey guys welcome back to my channel and welcome to april's vlog if you're new here hi my name is Ndwani Ngomani if you're a returning subscriber welcome back on this channel we we'll talk about all things careers we give each other tips and tricks on how to navigate our different careers i feel weird saying that because i feel like i haven't done a career dedicated video in a while but if you're watching this video this is april's vlogs we do monthly vlogs on this channel um so yeah it's the beginning of april today is um today is the 5th of april and um sorry guys i just got the most weirdest message but today's the 5th of april um it is in the morning i am working today so i just quickly want to do this intro and do this um haul i just want to show you some stuff that i bought from zara yesterday and i also got some stuff from primark as well let me actually start with the primark ooh, with the primark stuff i went to primark and i was just looking for a few um a few pieces to wear on my upcoming trip um you guys are gonna watch this vlog beginning of may so you probably would have already seen from my social media but i'm going to paris um for easter i just went and i got this um blue stripes um actually blue shirt with white stripes um i have a i have an outfit inspo for this shirt i'm gonna leave it somewhere on the screen to show you from pinterest i thought it was really beautiful the quality is really nice and i got this from primark for 14 pounds the second thing is a trench coat i don't know if you guys can see um it's a very very long trench coat i've been meaning to buy a trench coat for the longest time and i finally got it um i got this from primark the quality is really good i wanted a trench coat in a much darker color in a much darker beige um but this will do because this is the only one that they had um and then it has this cape thing at the back which i think is really nice and gives character to the coat um i'm also going to leave like a an outfit inspo with what i want to do with this um trench coat but i just thought um i should get it for now um and i bought this for 45 pounds at primark from zara i got this um white knit sweater with stripes i've been seeing this going around a lot with the ladies um it seems like a very in piece right now so i thought you know what let me go with the trend and get it it works very very well with the rest of my clothing the color scheme um works really well and it's really really good knit wear i'm also gonna leave a picture with an outfit inspo for what i want to do with this um but yeah i got this from zara uh for 29 or 30 pounds really um so this was 30 pounds and then the last thing that i got from zara is just this black plain um sweater or like jersey if you can call it that it's just literally um black long sleeved it has this gold detailing on the arms which i really think it's cute um i do have white sweaters but i was lacking a black one so i thought i should just buy this from zara as well i got this for 25 25.99 20, 26 pounds um so yeah that's what i got i just want to wash them quickly and then i'll iron and then i'll start packing later on for my trip i leave tomorrow which is so exciting um but yeah so i'm gonna go into work right now i'll pick up the camera at a later date if i hey guys it's another day today um today is the day today is the day finally going to france um behind me is a whole lot of packing that is happening i'll take you guys through what i have packed in there um but i just wanted to come on here and say happy easter you're gonna see this video way after easter anyway but i just wanted to say happy easter um someone is texting me oh okay i wanted to say happy easter um i hope you have a beautiful one 
i hope you know if you're going down to be with family i hope you're safe um if you're traveling n1 is in your brain i hope you arrive safely um i am spending easter this year in france which is a dream it really is a dream i never thought never in my life i could have imagined that i would spend easter in france but i am i'm leaving today today is thursday the 6th of april yes today's thursday the 6th of april um easter is tomorrow the 7th which is a friday but i'm leaving this i'm leaving today it's a thursday evening after work it's around probably 10 to 4 now uh we knocked off early at work they gave us like a it's not a half day honestly because we're working until until four but they they let us knock off an hour 30 minutes earlier so my train leaves at 8 p.m i'm finalizing my packing which i'll take you through right now um and then i'll be on my way to the station to catch the train and go have breakfast under the Eiffel tower i'm so excited let me show you guys what i've packed and then um let's get going so let's start here i've got these shoes which are a little bit dirty and a little bit old but these are my favorite white sneakers um i've just packed them i got my toothbrush actually i have my whole toiletries in there the reason i still use this thing guys like i'm taking the train but not the flight but because i'm used to how when you're flying internationally there's a limit of 100 mils on your liquids um if you don't have a checked bag so i always just put all my liquids as i'm packing into this um this little bag that they give us at the airport um just so everything is in there and i've just religiously done that so now even though i'm not flying and there's no limit to the 100 meals um i just put all my stuff in there and then i have my sunscreen this is over 100 mils. It's 200 mils, so I can take it this time. I've got my toothpaste, which is also over 100 mils. And then I've got my one and only. Guys, if you're struggling with your skincare, your face, this changed my life. Wash your face twice a day with this soap, and you will feel a difference probably in like a week. Try it. And then in here, I have my outfits. I have my trench coat, um, different outfits. Um, I have inspirations for all these outfits. I hope they come out the way I've seen them. And then I'm taking my Dune bag. This is what I'll be holding on a daily. And then here I have a coat which I'll be wearing now. That's why I didn't pack it in here. Um, definitely can't forget my passport. In here I have my bank card and my residence permit. Because my wallet, um, like, it's not giving CASA at all. Anyway, I have my cards in here and my residence permit i cannot get, come back into the country without my residence permit so i need to have it there uh i've already spoken about my passport uh power bank important when you're traveling taking snaps taking photos your battery runs out quicker airports my phone is charging and then i have this so the um, the france plugs have these pins um that we in South Africa, I would need like a twin plug to use this. But in France, their wall socket is this pin. So I don't need a twin plug. So I can just plug this into the wall and charge my phone. So I've taken two of these because I would probably have my phone charging on the one end and have my power bank charging on the one hand. And then I've got my keys and I'm going to take this little cute bag. I really love this bag. I bought, no, someone bought this for me from H&M. Um... I've loved it since. It's so easy to walk around in because it's like a little backpack thing. I really like backpacks, guys. You would have seen from my last unboxing that I had a backpack that I bought. But yeah, that's basically it. I'm yet to knock off from work. But it's only just 15 minutes, so don't think I'm taking so much time. And yeah. <laughs> Coach, 
I guess it's the door, right? And this is the sorry, this is the chain. We are taking the Eurostar. I'm so excited. Do you guys see this? Do you guys see this tower behind me? How beautiful. I'm so excited. But we are here. Um, we had to take the metro line. Bonjour. Bonjour. Ça va? Hi. Oh no, thank you. <laughs> no thanks. But we are here. I'm so excited. Um, Guys, I don't know what to do with myself. I really don't know what to do with myself for the longest time. I've been talking about coming to Paris, coming to Paris, coming to Paris. I am in Paris and I'm beyond, I'm beside myself. Um, but yeah, this is it. This is the Eiffel Tower. It is uh, under maintenance down here. So you can probably see like some maintenance stuff. But we're like at the park and everyone is just chilling. The sun is in and out, but you know what? I'm grateful for perfect weather. It's not raining, it's not windy, it's not anything. It's not overly cold, um, so it's great. But I'm in Paris. I'm so excited, <laughs> I'm so excited. Uh, so we're just probably gonna take a whole lot of pictures now. And yeah, I'm in Paris, what? How is this my life guys like if i told you a couple of years ago you wouldn't believe you would not believe that i am the girl who failed you will not believe that i'm the girl who went through uni went through articles thinking i'm a year behind because my peers had passed um the first time and were ahead of me but 
look at me now <laughs> i'm so excited anyway guys let i will i'll see you guys later on let us see around let's see what's happening around um get some snaps i've lost my concern they're probably getting snaps somewhere um but we'll probably get snaps and yeah bonjour We had lunch. We are now at Moulin Rouge. I don't know if that's how they pronounce it, but this place over here is called Moulin Rouge. You can see the name. I'm enjoying pronouncing things in French because it really sounds so sexy. Like someone could just be saying, Excuse me, and you'll feel like they are proposing to you. <laughs> but, yeah, I just wanted to update you. We're gonna go get some souvenirs now. I don't think I'll be buying anything today. Um, I mean, we still have like three more days in, in, in Paris. So I still wanna wait and see what my options are. But like I said, we're at Melon Rouge now. We're just gonna go to the souvenir place, get something nice quickly uh, for the other people. I will buy later on during the trip after I've seen like options and we'll probably go to the eiffel tower for the light show this evening um but then i'll take you guys with me and show you um but yeah
guys, this girl's outfit is giving Emily in Paris. This soldier man must pass. If you see the photo, you think it was so Why are the soldiers in a market? Anyway, I was still saying this girl's outfit is giving Emily in Paris and everything. It's so cute. It's really, really cute. We discovered a market called La Marais Catherine. Um, oh, it looks like a restaurant place on the inside. Like many different restaurants. Chairs, Eugene. Um, I'm butchering the pronunciations, by the way. Let's take a picture of the menu so we can come back. Oh, and it looks so nice, ne? The menu. Well, I mean, the prices look nice. <laughs> Uh, La Primagere. I don't know if that's gonna be pronounced, guys, but bear with me. And I guess that's the bonjour. Hello. Uh, it looks really nice. Yeah. It's like a little market with loads and loads of restaurants. Uh, let me show you what some of the menus look like. A lot of the prices are around 15 euros um, depending on what you want but I think the most you could pay is probably like 20 euros um, and that's probably when you've had like a really really nice food um, this is Lisa Borouge and that's how it looks but yeah we stumbled across this place it looks really cute so many restaurants Oh, I just want to say hello. I'm wondering why everyone keeps saying good. I'm seeing I like to this guy. He's so nice. What a time to be alive! Guys, I'm loving every minute of Paris. I can't believe it's almost 8 p.m. and you can still see the sun. It's so beautiful here. <sighs> this has been literally my facial expression the whole time I've been here because I love the city like I love the city <laughs> I really love it the sunset slate is a lot warmer than London everything just speak everyone speaks French is that that I can't speak now bonjour bonjour good morning good morning guys it is day two. <laughs> it is day two today of our stay in Paris. Um, yesterday was good. It was amazing. We did all the fun stuff. We left some places to visit for today and tomorrow because we're still here for another two days. Um, so today we just sort of like the plan really today is to get a few more snaps for memories and then we are gonna go find a place to have lunch and then we're gonna go do some window shopping maybe um, you know it is the home of Louis Vuitton and Dior and all those good brands that you guys love that we all love so we're gonna go do some window shopping um, 
we probably can't afford any of them. <laughs> so window shopping is gonna be good enough for this time in Paris. Um, but yeah, that's really what we're doing. We have already had breakfast. I completely forgot to vlog the pastry place that we got breakfast. We had croissants and coffee for breakfast, which is actually what the French breakfast is. It's either you get a croissant or pronounced croissant, um, or you get this other thing. Sam, what's the chocolate thing again? No. If you don't want a croissant like that, Pana chocolat, it's called Pana chocolat. So it's either you get a croissant or a pana chocolat, which we got a croissant, of course. Um, so yeah, that that's what we did. I'll leave a picture here to show, sort of show you like the setting of the place we had breakfast at. But we're just gonna walk around. We're by the Eiffel Tower now. We wanna take snaps on a different angle to what we did yesterday, and with different outfits today. So we're basically creating content. <laughs> But <laughs> pyramids yet but we've booked to actually go in and see the Mona Lisa which is what we'll be doing now but it's beautiful I'm impressed the infrastructure the architecture is just brilliant
how beautiful the Eiffel Tower is in the evening when it's lit up isn't that beautiful I just wow Wow, wow, wow. Everyone is out to come see the light show. Apparently, there's a light show um, every time. Every hour on the clock, there's a light show. So, we're waiting for the 8 o'clock one to see what that looks like. Wow. It is so beautiful. Wow. That is so beautiful. Oh my goodness. Oh my gosh, guys. Good morning, guys. It is day three today. Um, it is a bit late. The girls haven't been getting any sleep because we are out lazuling everywhere. But it's day three. We are out for, I guess, breakfast, lunch. Because it's almost midday. Um, it's almost midday. So anyway, um, we're just going to go have some food. And then today we are doing up the trumpf. I don't know if that's how they pronounce it, but that's what we're doing today. Um, girls want to go up the Eiffel Tower. I don't know if I want to do that. We'll see how it goes. Um, and yeah, basically that's what we're doing today. Guys, we are on the street to go see the arc up the which is all the way up there. I hope you guys can see all the way up there. There are so many people. They literally blocked the whole street. So we are walking on the road um, going up there. We are here guys. This is the Arc de Trump. Every time I say that, I feel like I'm not saying it right. <laughs> but we are here, it is so full. Uh, there are people everywhere, every angle of this park. But this is gorgeous, man. And also, there are people on top. I don't know if you can tell, but like, there are people up there, probably seeing a view of the city. But yeah, isn't that beautiful? I feel like Paris is so much more beautiful than London. It's so much China, spacious. Honestly, like it's beautiful, guys. phone is not stable let me hold it like this there we go it's the end of the day i am sitting at a very nice garden um, garden area place let me show you this side it's like nice little flowers it's like a little cute picnic spot 
in front of the Eiffel Tower. Mac and Sam have gone up the Eiffel Tower to climb it, um, to go all the way up. I decided not to do it because I really, I really don't want to. Um, I don't want to go up that tower. Um, so I decided that while they do that, I'm just gonna sit, relax, have a a little cute picnic <laughs> moment with my Five Guys drink. For lunch, we had Five Guys burgers and fries. Um, so I'm just still finishing the drink from that meal. I'm so full. Anyway. Yeah, so I'm just gonna sit here, wait for them to get up the tower and come down whenever they do. And then after that, um, we literally have nothing more planned. I think we've done all the things that we wanted to do in Paris. The Eiffel Tower, um, and then we went to the Louvre, we went to Moulin Rouge, we went to Arc... What is it? Arc de Troyes? Um, what else did we do? Yeah, like... Also some really unfamiliar landmarks that we've done as well. Um, we've gone and walked around the city, we've been on the metros, um, we've had croissant and uh, hot chocolate for breakfast. So we've done a lot. We've done a lot of things that we wanted to do, especially for a first time in Paris with the time that we had. So yeah, that's really about it. But I must say like being in Paris, I mean being in London having lived in London has definitely helped me understand Paris a lot more quicker Like I understand how the transport system works. I understand how to get on the bus on the train I understand like the stops and like it just makes everything so familiar because Europe is essentially It essentially feels so similar. I can't imagine having done this trip straight from South Africa where I wouldn't know how the trains work, the buses, um, and also there's a language barrier in the city as well. People don't speak English here. Um, so yeah, there's, I'm really grateful that I've had the London experience first and then had the rest of Europe because I've sort of become acclimatized to how Europe works, if that makes sense. But yeah, um, that's basically what I'm doing now. <laughs> Um, and then after this we're probably just gonna hang around maybe um, and then we're gonna go back to the hotel and pack up we leave tomorrow going back to London tomorrow um, on the train again and we leave at like 8 a.m. so we got to be at the station as early as possible which is what we are going to do so yeah Hey guys, it is about 9 p.m. now. The Eiffel Tower is lit up. I'm just gonna watch the light show, which lasts about five minutes um, um, after nine. And I'm enjoying a nice prepare. I bought it from this food truck behind me. Um, so I'm just gonna have this. It is a Nutella and banana crepe. Uh, Mm. It's good. It's really good. I lost Mac and Sam. They were up climbing, getting up there on the Eiffel Tower, and I was like, hell no, I'm not going up these days. So, I got myself some dessert. Let me show you guys actually. So, that's what it looks like it's like a pancake type thing it's very very nice it's very tasty um oh. <laughs> mm. it's very nice and tasty i'm just gonna eat this and wait for the light show to come up and then after that i'm gonna call it a day and we're back to london tomorrow so. hey guys um i'm finally back from paris and i just thought i should do like a little sit down segment on this vlog just to address a lot of people's questions that i've been getting via dms um over the past weekend when i was in france um around the schengen visa process do i need one what is the process 
which consulate should you apply with how long does it take what do you need to submit you know all of that admin and then there were some questions as well with regards to um traveling to paris particularly um getting around transport um um food i guess the general costs if i want to put it that way so i just decided let me actually just do like a little sit down segment on this vlog right after you watch the clips so um i'll start with the schengen the schengen visa process so with the schengen visa you need to get an appointment um with the consulate for the country which you're intending to travel to so if you're intending to travel to europe and you are south african and you do not have a an ancestral visa or you know you're just a basic human being <laughs> like me you will most likely need a schengen visa so a schengen visa is basically a visa that allows you access to the schengen area and these are countries that have come together in europe and have signed under the schengen i think there was a, a schengen agreement so like i said you need to apply you need to get an appointment with the consulate for the country which you're intending to to travel to so if you're intending to travel to france you then need to have your appointment with the french consulate um and if you're intending to travel with another country then you need to have your appointment with that country what i have seen and from my experience is that when you're booking your appointment you need to make sure that you book with the consulate with the country that you're intending to travel to the most or the longest that's if you have multiple trips um that you are using for your schengen application so for example with myself earlier this year i traveled to norway and i traveled to france and i still have other trips that i plan to travel um for the rest of my schengen visa period right so what then i needed to do is because i was planning to travel to norway uh first and i was planning to travel to norway um the longest then norway is the consulate or the norwegian consulate is what i had my appointment with because number one it's where i was gonna go the first and it's where i'm i was planning to go the longest so of all my trips that i have provided in my visa application norway was the longest so if for you let's say you have a trip booked for france and then maybe you also want to go to portugal then um whichever one of these countries you're going to be there the longest is the country that you should book your appointment with right so that's it with appointment i guess the other thing with appointment is that you need to start early like right at the beginning of the year in january pull up your calendar look at all those bank holidays that you have or those holidays public holidays that you have plan around that and see when you would like to travel where you would like to travel and make sure that you book appointments as early as possible i would even suggest like january early feb is when you should be doing or looking for appointment dates because those run out quite quickly a lot of people travel, especially if you're in the uk a lot of people travel a lot um during the summer so a lot of the appointment slots are fully booked by mid feb late feb literally for the entire year you may get an appointment date if someone else cancels but what are the chances of doing that and even if they do cancel you're not always on the website so they may cancel and someone else may pick it up um and you might really struggle getting an appointment date i struggled last year and i ended up not traveling anywhere to the schengen area um because i just could not get an appointment date literally the whole year and i guess i started thinking about this late because i started looking for appointment dates i like i think around april may um and everything was just fully booked so do that as quick as possible i guess when you see this video it, it's a bit like it'll probably be like beginning of may which is a bit late uh, uh, to be honest it's quite late but maybe you can still find somebody who cancels and you can still find a slot i'm so sorry if there's like background squeakiness and stuff there's so much wind outside everything is literally shaking including the windows 
so yeah that's it with appointment dates and then um the consulate that you need to do it with and then after that let's say you do get your appointment date what you need to submit is um there's a whole list of documents on the consulate's website that should be able to guide you it's pretty straightforward but you need to prove that number one you are just visiting this country so you need to have flights to go and flights to return you need to show that you will leave the country they're not trying to give visas to people who are just going to get into the country and never leave right so you need to prove that you're going to leave and part of that is having your return flights booked or return transport whether using the train or the flight doesn't really matter but you need to have return um, transport booked you need to show where you're going to stay so you need to have a hotel booked um, you need to have a letter from your employer as well just to further prove that you are employed in a certain country and you have obligations to which you will return or you have to return that further proves that you're not go you're not trying to get into that country to stay forever you are going to leave and then the other thing that i can remember from the top of my head and this is not a full list please check the consulate's website um the last i guess the one other thing i can remember is travel insurance so you need to have travel insurance i think the minimum requirement is thirty thousand euros cover um in case you get injured in case you know um something happens to you while we're in that country they need to know that somebody will be able to pay your medical bills um or that you'll be able to to be transported back into your country and receive medical attention so i don't know what i'm missing but there's a whole lot of uh, lists they need to see your bank statements as well you need to prove that you'll be able to live for the number of days that you're going to be in that country it's a whole list guys please just check out the website i can't remember everything from the top of my head so that's basically um what you will need when you go into the consulate and then obviously your your headshots they're gonna need that as well but they provide that service at the consulate's office at the date of your appointment um if you want me to do like a, a detailed video on like a schengen visa i can probably do that um but just on a high level that's what they will need and then um yeah i think that's about it on the schengen visa oh yeah it takes about 15 days so the date from the date of your appointment um 15 days is the period that they um estimate that you will receive your Sheng your your schengen visa back so i.e your passport so obviously during this process they will confiscate your passport to put that schengen visa stamp on it so for 15 days you will not have your passport which can be quite risky in case you know anything happens and you maybe need to travel back home or whatever that needs your passport you won't have your passport for 15 days so make sure it's a period where you don't need to travel anywhere um i mean you know unfortunate things happen and maybe some emergencies come up um but i think you can also pay for your service to have an express service for your your passport to be returned as soon as possible if you do have extra money for that you can do that um but yeah it takes 15 days from the date of your appointment until the date you receive the the visa back um the cost of the schengen visa is around 80 pounds no 80 euros is about 80 euros which is about 75 76 pounds or so it's really not expensive um so there's that fee some consulates also charge you a fee to do the application so over and above the actual schengen um visa fee there's an admin fee that you need to pay to the consulate um the which um i did mine with no way so i think i had to pay around i think it was 25 pounds or something like that i don't quite remember um but yeah you you will know all of these costs as you go on to the consulate side now let's move on to my trip in paris this is getting <laughs> way long but i really hope you guys find value in it um so in paris or oh, well my paris trip um, I wanted a different kind of experience with Paris. I didn't want to fly there because there is an opportunity to take the train to Paris from London. Um, and I wanted to use the train. Um, so I booked the Eurostar, um, which is the train that runs between London and Paris. Um, every day it runs at different times. 
um so i booked the train when i booked it again i booked all of my stuff in january guys so as part of my visa application i had this trip to paris so i had to book a return um transport i had to prove that i'm gonna come back so my return transport was the train instead of a flight right so i booked in january um and obviously booking in january and my trip was going to be in april that's like months away so the prices were still cheaper the eurostar can get quite pricey especially when you book like last minute so if you want the experience of a train just make sure you book well in advance um but it is absolutely worth the time it's absolutely worth the money the experience is amazing um so i booked the train it was about 80 euros Oh no, let me say, no, I'm going to say it's here. So it's 160, 160 pounds return. So 80 euros to go, 80 euros to come. I mean, 80 pounds. I don't care saying euros. 80 pounds to go, 80 pounds to come back. Um, so it ended up being about 160 pounds for that trip, which was not bad. Um, I'm really not mad, especially because with the train, um, I could bring in up to two bags of luggage and hand luggage and I have no limitation on my liquids I could bring liquids of over 100 meals if you've flown international you know about the 100 meals rule everywhere in this world but with the train I didn't have that so yeah that's how we then got to to paris and then transportation in and around the city paris from our hotel to the eiffel tower to moulin rouge to arc de triomphe to the louvre to all the main attractions we would use the metro which is their underground trains um or would use the bus if it's within close range um all of these things if you do have the app city mapper city mapper also works in france as well so when you get there and you open your city mapper it'll ask you um it'll automatically detect your location and say oh you're in france do you want to change to the french um city mapper app and then you click yes and then everything will update and you can use your city mapper in france as well the same way you use it in london if you're planning to travel from south africa download an app called city mapper and that will help you navigate around paris um it works in paris it works in london it works in manchester i'm not very sure about ireland i mean i'm still also figuring it out as i travel to all these other cities but for paris it does work and that's what we use to get around so you literally just pop in the place that you want to go it detects the location that you are you are at and then it gives you which station to go to which train to take which platform um it's it's absolutely amazing it's amazing south africa needs one of those um, but I don't know how it's going to work with our transport system. But anyway, so that's how we got around. Um, paying for, 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 for the metro, we got a three-day pass. So if you are planning to travel, make sure you get a three-day pass. It's about 30 euros for three days. So you pay 30 euros. They give you like a little card thing that you can use to tap at the metro and on the bus as well you pay one fee which is the 30 euros and you use it for three days that's why it's a three-day pass um which i think saved us a lot of money because we didn't have to pay every time we get on the bus or every time we get on the metro we can just use that three-day pass and then in terms of food um honestly it really this depends on your preference i would have liked to do like more higher end restaurants in paris but that didn't work out quite well um so we had a lot of street food we had a lot of um croissants i mean you know the french are known for their love of pastries and bakery and baked goods so we had a lot of pastries we had a lot of croissants and coffees and nibbles you know and a lot of street food so that wasn't very expensive i would say about 15 pounds a meal um and we also had a hotel that offered breakfast so breakfast we didn't have to pay for we only had to figure out lunch and dinner which made things so much easier and then in terms of places of attraction all the places are free the eiffel tower is free honestly the louvre moulin rouge um Arc de Triomphe, all of that is free um they just you know attraction sites that you can go into we didn't do anything that we had to pay um 
but if you want if you do want to go like up the eiffel tower you do pay for that um so you can either take the stairs up and then get a lift all the way to the top or you can get a lift all the way to the bottom to the top that's about 28 euros or 30 euros around about um but other than that we didn't have to pay for oh we had to pay to get into the louvre which was about 17 euros um so that was not bad so like, yeah 17 euros is really not bad um so we did that but for most places it is free the louvre we had to pay because we we got in to see the mona lisa and obviously you know if you if you're gonna see like iconic paintings like the mona lisa you're gonna have to pay so we did pay for that but if you just want to go like outside where there's like the pyramids um and just get like some really cool pictures you don't need to pay for that and yeah what else am i missing um yeah that's about it um with paris i mean so, oh, the hotel um we paid around around about i think about two i think 200 pounds was a lot probably around 160 pounds per person um um in in paris so that also depends on your taste <laughs> you know if you want to like do a more high-end um hotel then you're probably gonna have to pay more but we paid about 160 odd pound i don't, I don't quite remember but it was over 100 pounds less than 200 pounds um we paid that per four for three nights yeah those are total for three nights by the way um each person um including breakfast so yeah yeah that's how paris was i hope i covered the basics and i hope you guys get like a little bit more sense if you are planning a trip to paris highly highly recommend it's very easy to get around especially because you can use city mapper which if you are residing in london or in the uk you're probably already so familiar with um and that's how you get around in paris will i do paris again yes most definitely i've fallen in love with the city um paris is as romantic as they make it out to be in movies like literally everywhere you go you just like seeing the view of the eiffel tower like 360 view wherever you are in the city you can probably like spot it if you are obviously high enough if you're standing between two two tall buildings you probably can't but i would definitely do paris again um i am planning to do paris again actually so yeah i definitely highly recommend if you are thinking of planning a trip to paris if you are planning it from south africa i would recommend you plan <laughs> because paris is expensive um, um i mean it's one of the major attractions of the world you know so it is gonna be pretty expensive especially because you're coming with a weaker currency but if you are coming in with pounds or you're coming with with dollars um, then I think you are at a much better stance to enjoy the city and see what the city has to offer. So yeah, that's all I had to say in this short 20 minute stint. <laughs> um, I hope it gives you guys some perspective.